So I'm going to talk uh, very briefly. Some of you are familiar with this initiative and some of you are not, but I want to kind of talk about what we've been up to for the last few months in particular with regards to activities on a program that we call the National Geospatial Platform. And you heard Ann mention a lot of this work evolved from work that we did uh, several years ago at the EPA and that they continue um, to move forward with with uh, great success, as you saw, and using that as kind of a test bed for taking some of the ideas forward nationally. And here's a, a very brief history of, of kind of this initiative and, and how we got here. And it was really back in 1994 um, that an executive order called for the establishment of this thing called the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. How is it that we can make sure that the right spatial data are available to users in all sectors of the economy to support decision making, to support mapping, to support all kinds of things that go on, not just in government, but in the private sector as well. And since that time, there's been a lot of really important foundational work that's been done. Mark's you know, organization, the Open Geospatial Consortium, is somebody that we use you know, extensively and that we leverage to move forward a lot of the, the standards and interoperabilities. Shemender mentioned the geospatial interoperability reference architecture. So a lot of work is going on you know, with regards to those policies and standards. One of the biggest you know, effects that this had uh, with regards to evolving this idea of a national spatial data infrastructure is registries. So we created registries. There was geodata.gov that evolved into data.gov as time went on or merged with data.gov. And the result is we're in a position today where as a, as a federal government and really with our state partners, uh, tribal entities as well, regional governments, there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of data sets that are registered in these shared national catalogs. And recently we've got, kind of gotten to the point from a technology perspective where that's not really the problem we're trying to solve anymore. So registering your data is one thing, making it discoverable you know, is, is important. But we're getting to the point where you know, somebody really needs to make a decision. They need to get their hands on this data, you know, use it, make a map, build an analytical product. So not just now what, where do we go, but there is kind of this big so what. So we've got 200,000 data sets registered in data.gov. Most of them are geospatial. So what? You know, what kind of decisions can people make? Why is government better because uh, that information is available and accessible to people? And that's really one of the things that we've recognized in the Federal Geographic Data Committee over the last couple of years and are trying to, to advance. And that's, you know, comes with a lot of other, uh, you know, changes that have happened in our community. The role of government in this national spatial data infrastructure idea in the global geospatial ecosystem has changed tremendously since 1994. Um, it used to be that the government was the major producer of a lot of this content and, and less as a consumer. That role's flipped. The private sector is now the major producer of geospatial data, although the government agencies, as Suzette pointed out during her, her talk this morning, are still very important players in that larger, much larger ecosystem. Moreover, the use of geospatial information in the public sector is now ubiquitous. And you heard some of that in the panel this morning where this you know, has been a discipline that came from being special and different than mainstream IT, um, you know, really practiced by the guys with the big shiny plotters and the mini computers in basements across many of your organizations 10 or 15 years ago. Um, but that's different. This, this technology is everywhere now. Maps are everywhere. You saw in Anne's examples, you know, these are th real things that are driving real decisions on a daily basis at big organizations like the EPA. But we think we've got a number of major challenges that still need to be addressed. Uh, one is that I already touched on a little bit. There's this ocean of geospatial content out there that's a part of the National Spatial Data Infrastructure idea. Finding the right data or the right map or the right tool at the right time is still a non-trivial exercise that we can do better on. Uh, moreover, a lot of the approaches that we've had, these catalog-based approaches, are really about telling people across this ecosystem where your stuff is. We haven't built really collaboration spaces. Schmender talked about that a little bit in his talk. How do you kind of bring people together uh, you know, with standards, bring people together to work on policies, areas of shared interest, and that's something we're trying to evolve as well. And then lastly, and perhaps most importantly, one of the things that we've seen is this concept of the NSDI has evolved is it's been largely left as an exercise to the end user. Some agencies are really good at publishing their content and making it available over standards compliant interfaces and mechanisms with highly performing, you know it's gonna be there and it's reliable. Some agencies either aren't as good at it, don't have the resources to do it, don't have the people, don't have the infrastructure. That's where technology really comes into a lot of this, that we think we can do a better job as an enterprise by using shared technology and shared investment to help make sure that the data are always there and always available at high quality. 
So I'm going to go ahead and build this whole slide really quickly while I'm talking. But as, as this kind of culture has changed, as these things have come up in the discussions of the Federal Geographic Data Committee, we've been taking a lot of this to heart and trying really to move forward. How do we change given what's happening around us? Well, how do we take the best advantage of the time that we have together, the shared investments we make, the resources that the members of the FGDC bring to the table? to improve what we're doing from a national spatial data infrastructure standpoint. And really the, these ideas started to evolve over the last five to seven years. And we've gone through a series of planning activities, uh, a series perhaps most importantly of getting stable funding agreements together where we can start to do some things collaboratively as a community. Uh, Ivan Deloach, uh, who leads the executive uh, secretariat for the FGDC, myself and others, have been working together to try and use some of that investment, some of that time we spend together to build shared technology. That program is branded as the Geospatial Platform, the National Geospatial Platform Initiative, and, and really our, our goals are to make sure that we're improving cross-government decision-making, supporting collaboration in our community, and ultimately through the use of open standards and better access to trusted information, improving understanding when agencies are making their decisions together. Um, we think that this is an opportunity to focus on what matters the most. So I mentioned this, this ocean of the National Spatial Data Infrastructure, tens or hundreds of thousands of data sets. One of the really important behind the scenes things that's been going on in the FGDC is there's been a, long, a, a discussion, very uh, fruitful discussion about which of these data sets do we care the most about? You know, what, what are the, out of those 300,000 data sets, whatever it is, what are the ones that we really want people to be able to find, that we want to know are reliable, that we want to know are documented well and out there? And this concept of what we call national geospatial data assets has evolved through those discussions. And that's a big part of what we're trying to do in the platform now, is to surface and make available those national geospatial data assets. I won't talk as much about some of these other things, but other reasons for moving forward with some of this shared enterprise was really to look at how do we do better data acquisition across federal agencies and with our partners in other sectors uh, you know, through using shared technology. And lastly, I will touch on this, maximizing the reuse of data, tools, and services across uh, our agency partners. And that's where open standards come in. So a lot of what we're doing is really leveraging a lot of national standards, international standards, not just geospatial uh, for the OGC standards that I mentioned are, are of critical importance in the work that we do, but also stand, just W3C and other web and just general technology standards are things that we're uh, you know, really serious about as we build this shared infrastructure to make sure that we're providing open geospatial data tools and services that can be consumed no matter what the technology choices that our partners across the ecosystem make and for maximizing reuse of capabilities and interoperability among systems. One other thing that we've dealt with over the last several years is what I'll uh, admittedly say is a bit of an identity crisis on the, the geo platform. So who's this thing for? Um, you know, there, I think it has value to citizens and people who are out there looking for government information. But really, our sweet spot is agency collaboration. So how is it that members of the Federal Geographic Data Committee, our partners, our co-regulators, as Ann mentioned, in some cases in states or tribal governments or local governments, you know, really, how is it that we work together to, to, do, to perform better government operations because the geospatial content is, is better shared and better accessible? That's not to mean it doesn't have value, it doesn't have utility outside of, of the government, outside of the public sector, because we think it does now and we think it will continue to over time. We're just trying to build a lot of the tools and capabilities that we have, recognizing that there's this huge, and you heard a lot about this this morning, consumer-based, you know, business-based uh, geospatial marketplace that is fabulous. We have no intention, no ability to uh, you know, compete with that. This is really a government you know, ecosystem that we've put together. So if you go to geoplatform.gov today, it's, it's really the third or fourth technology iteration of, of what, we've, um, what we've been doing for the last couple of years in this. And we're really on a, a glide path now where we've got quarterly releases and a lot of new capabilities um, that are coming online frequently. A couple of uh, things that I'll touch on here that we have, um, you heard a lot this morning in the first panel about cloud. So that was a big deal for us. And in fact, one of the, the things that we're most uh, focused on in terms of this shared technology infrastructure is trying to make it easier for our federal partners to move data services and tools into commercial cloud environments. That's taken us a long time. There's been different references to FISMA and security you know, requirements and authorities to operate you know, throughout the morning so far, and I'm sure those will continue. 
One of the key things that we're trying to do in this initiative is to, to the best that we can, because it's not always true, but to take that burden on once and to hope that other agencies can benefit from it, you know, from across our, our partners. So we've got now in the Amazon Web Services environment a large and growing ecosystem of a couple hundred actually virtual machines that are driving the, the technology capabilities that are available at geoplatform.gov and through our, across our partners um, today. So the, the move to cloud was something that we've been very focused on and now we've got a scalable, you know, very highly performant infrastructure that will be important when I, uh, near the end of the presentation. Um, really being able to understand what your data sets are, the data sets that you're responsible for managing as an agency partner, the data sets that your agency manages, the data sets that your partner agencies manage, looking at this portfolio, how is it that our data and tools are being made available to people, and really going through and being able to look at dashboards and see uh, how we're doing from a performance standpoint. We've also focused on new users. When you came to the platform a couple of iterations ago, it wasn't very obvious what it was that you could do. You know, this is my first time here. You know, what, what do I need to learn about this site? We've tried to put a lot of that information up front, make it easy for people to register, get their feet wet, and to start to poke around with the tools. And along with that, we've launched a lot, uh, a much better help desk, you know, capability. So we get frequent calls and, and emails that we can give people a hand as they're getting used to using the tools. One of the important ideas, I mentioned collaboration is kind of a cornerstone of what we're trying to do in the geospatial platform. And it, to be honest, I didn't recognize this when this program first started, that there was going to be such a need for that part of it. You know, as I mentioned, we came from the catalog and data services provisioning and shared tools um, environment. One of the things that we've heard repeatedly is there's a need for agencies who work together to have these little collaboration spaces that they can pre present their part of the geospatial ecosystem. Shmendra mentioned the geospatial interoperability reference architecture. This is content that we're in the process of bringing into geoplatform.gov today so that that information is available to users and we want to make it living so people can contribute, have conversations, grab pieces of the information, data, tools, share it with others. So to really focus on some of the social aspects of what the geospatial community can do and sort of supporting some of those engagements and interactions. And you see a couple of what we call communities on the platform today. Uh, the Geospatial Concept of Operations is a program managed by the Department of Homeland Security, but kind of cuts across multiple levels of government. The Worldwide Human Geography Working Group that is supported by the State Department and the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, but has a much larger you know, audience and, and participant community. So think of these just as little corners of a government website that communities of interest and communities of practice can come together, use the shared tools to present their own story or to reach their, their, their community and their partners. The social experience I mentioned, the communities are a big part of that. But the other things that we're trying to do with regards to the social experience are to make it easier for people to share their content. So I made a map. I want to make this map available to other people. How is it that I embed that into my own website, put that into a community. So all these kind of technical capabilities that are coming out in the platform that really allow people to share geographic content across the users of the, uh, not only the platform, but other places where, uh, you know, people have constituencies, agency websites and things like that is work that's underway as well. That's empowered by a, a map viewer that we've created where you can go in and for the first time, and it's almost embarrassing to say this to be honest, when data.gov launched, um, the, and initially there wasn't a data viz capability in it. So we didn't have the ability to start to layer some of these things onto a map. Different iterations of that came and went over time. But one of the things that we focused on in the recent rebuild of geoplatform.gov was to make sure that it wasn't just a textual query you know, of the catalog that you could go through and say, I want to know what this looks like. I want to add it to a map with this data. So now all of the web service enabled geospatial data in data.gov is accessible and viewable through our web map viewer. You can build mashups, you can save things, share them with other people, publish maps, and so on. So that's new capabilities that you'll see for those who haven't looked at the site in some time that have come online uh, really this spring and will continue to evolve uh, over the coming several months. When you save those maps, those are we have a, a map management capability. So how is it that I can take this map and, and store it and come back to it later, or store it and share it with a, with a partner? There are other, there are commercial capabilities where people do this kind of work already, uh, Esri ArcGIS Online being one of those big environments. So instead of picking a technology winner, what we want to do is just create galleries of open maps. So how is it that we have web maps that live in multiple environments, including some that happen to be housed in geoplatform.gov proper, 
But starting with uh, ArcGIS Online, you can reference maps there and share them with our map gallery as well. So users, you can come in. It doesn't matter where you created the map. It doesn't matter what tools that you're using to do this. It's a web map, and you can share it with other things. And I think there's an interesting you know, um, discussion to be had in the OGC and elsewhere about what does an open web map look like? Because we have multiple environments where the map is really the object that's being shared, and not, you know, not just the data services, but this kind of higher order abstraction of this content, I think, is potentially an interesting discussion. Uh, lastly, I want to touch on the performance dashboard. So this is, um, these capabilities are not yet online, but they're going to be online, I heard, mid-May, so soon. We're going through a process of vetting some of the content that's in there now. I mentioned one of the big challenges of this idea of the National Spatial Data Infrastructure, and that, that's that it's dependent on a bunch of people who you don't know, spread out over agencies all over the country, all over the world, publishing high-quality data, making sure those services are available, they're up, they're um, you know, well documented and so on. And what we've seen in practice is that unfortunately that's all, not always true. People publish data services, they publish a metadata record, and then they move the service, but they forgot to change the metadata record. Services go up, services go down, metadata records get stale. We didn't really have a monitoring capability across this network of, of uh, interoperable web services where people could check and see how are we doing, how's my agency doing, um, you know, so we, as a way to, to kind of get signals as to what needs to be fixed. So we're in the process of releasing a number of these different tools and it's a little, it's very hard to see, but if you go across the top, each of the FGDC agencies for those national geospatial data assets that I mentioned has gone through and done a full life cycle assessment of their data sets, of which one of those key data sets is it that they manage. And they um, have answered questions on how they're doing in terms of the completeness, the quality, the documentation, the investment to date, and so on. And we've rolled the, all of that up into dashboards where now you'll be able to look across the different content themes of the National Spatial Data Infrastructure and down through different individual departments and agencies to see how people are doing. It's more or less a report card for the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. With the major difference that we joke about being that you see all the colors on the dashboard are green. So this is one of the things about interagency collaboration. There's no red. Everybody is, you know, different shades of shades of good, you know, in terms of how this is going forward. But that's actually really important from a technology standpoint for us. The purpose of a da this dashboard and the other dashboards that we'll release on geoplatform.gov isn't to browbeat people or to tell them they've done a bad job. We have to recognize this is a best effort opportunity across many of our partner organizations. That's where the cloud comes in because you know, we really have this large and growing shared infrastructure now where if an agency is not able to keep a web service up and running, they're not doing a great job and we're measuring that we can do it for them. We can offer this shared infrastructure that we're making available to, to partner and to bring that content into our environment with the goal being we want to raise everybody's ships and make sure that all of the data that we're keeping track of are ultimately highly performant and available. So you see some of those reliability indicators there. The dashboard, like I mentioned, will come online in about two weeks and I'd encourage people to go around and start playing with it who are interested. I think this is a, a major part of, of the evolution of what we're doing. So what's coming next? We're going to be expanding some of the community engagement capabilities, um, releasing some new uh, capabilities for integrating content from other environments. Uh, we're working right now on an upgraded marketplace capability, so how is it that agencies can work together around shared data acquisition? Uh, metadata tools for discovery of resources and how data get linked to service, more and more of the measurement and capabilities that are there. One thing that's not on the slide that I want to touch on that's coming out uh, late this summer and is another reason why our cloud infrastructure is important, and Javier mentioned the semantic, you know, kind of search and some of those capabilities during his talk. Um, we are taking all of the metadata records from data.gov, building knowledge graphs about data, maps, layers, things that live in data.gov, and we're we will be enabling semantic search on all of that content. So if you search for fuel, you'll get hits for gas station and other things that are like it. From a search standpoint, but I think more interesting from a geospatial user standpoint, we're building towards an experience with our web map viewer that now when you, when you pull up a map, it'll say, you might consider adding this layer to this map because we think it's related to the other layers that you have here. Or you're at a scale that that layer actually doesn't make sense. 
Here's a suggestion for a layer that you might switch out for that. So to really use what we know in these metadata catalogs and exploit that in a way that's much more like your search experience and your experience on the commercial web, and that's really what we're trying to build towards in some of the geoplatform.gov capabilities that are currently under development. Uh, with that, I will close just with a few quick bullets. So really the things that we're focused on now are trying to make people, uh, make it easy for people to find the right data and maps when they come into a, this massive uh, national spatial data infrastructure idea to make sure that high quality web services are available for as much of the data as we can, but certainly for those things that we've deemed national geodata assets, the goal is to make all of them available over web services of known quality in open formats. Um, and really, ultimately, to build the tools in the ecosystem and through some of those communities to make it easier for people to share, reuse, and collaborate uh, using the content that's available from the, the federal agencies and our state partners. So I'll stop there. Thanks. Thank you.